morning. Welcome to worship at Mount Calvary. It is a delight to be here with you this morning. A special welcome to those who are visiting us for the first time this morning. And also, I just want to give a special thank you to our singers this morning, Sage and Anna, and you will be delighted. So can we give them a little thank you in advance? And as always, uh, Aaron on the organ, you just a note, you, if you have time, you'll want to stay for the post lead. It's a, I think they call it a barn burner, right? It's on fire. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's stand together and sing the gathering song.
Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, <clears throat> take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. may be seated. Our Old Testament reading comes from the prophet Zechariah, the ninth chapter. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Let us pray together. O Jesus, Prince of Peace, we pray for your very presence to fill this land. We pray that your peace would envelop and enfold us, embolden us to pray for peace everywhere. Amen. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Jesus promises us that he gives us peace in a different way than the world gives peace. What does this mean? This is a promise that we proclaim at nearly every funeral we do here at Mount Calvary. Make no mistake, the world is in deep need of peace more than ever all you need to do is open your newspaper or turn on the television 
these promises of peace that were spoken and prophesied hundreds of years before the human Christ walked the earth. The promise has been given, Christ has been born, died, rose again, and ascended, gifted us the Holy Spirit, which is sometimes called the dove of peace, and still we seek peace. Why? Because you and I live in that land between now and not yet. We live in that land between waking and sleeping, we sometimes call dreamland. There is a song called Somewhere in Between by beloved St. Olaf musicians Chris and Johnny. One of the phrases says this, They must have been traveling to Kansas City from the Twin Cities by way of Highway 35. And the lyric says, I was sleeping. I don't know if we're in Iowa or Missouri. We are somewhere in between. Even though Christ has come, even though Christ will come, we are not there yet. When you look at everything going on in the world, conflict in Ukraine that has turned from months into now years, conflict in Sudan, conflict all over the place right here where we live. The number of shootings in this country over the 4th of July weekend is mind-numbing and maddening. Oh yes, we are need peace. We are a world in need of a Prince of Peace. If the Prince of Peace has come, why are we not peaceful? I believe, for one, the Prince of Peace brings peace in a different way. Everything about Jesus is upside down, or as my friend John Strayton says, Jesus has come to bring a turned upside down world right side up. The Zechariah text tells us, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, daughter of Jerusalem. Your king is coming. Triumphant and victorious is he. Humble and riding on a donkey? But even further than a donkey, smaller than a donkey, he's riding on the smallest donkey imaginable. Our image of a prince or a king is one of him riding in great splendor on the most magnificent Arabian horse that you can imagine, tall, regal, in charge. But Jesus, this prince of peace, is different. This prince of peace comes quietly, and in his quiescence, he comes even more triumphantly. He comes in humility to bring peace to a world differently than the world gives it. The gospel that Sarah read for us, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. Give it to me. I will bring you peace, it says. We are not at peace because we are not at peace with ourselves. We are not at peace with our brothers and our sisters. We are not at peace among the nations. We are still a prideful, sinful people. We are convinced that we are right more than wanting to offer an olive branch of peace. Our sin, our pride and vanity cloud our lenses to see and witness the kind of peace that only Jesus, the Christ, brings. I invite you to reflect on your own relationships. I've reflected on these relationships as I've prepared for this, and I have become convinced that this text stings, because I know some of the people that I should be closest to, I am not at peace with them. Such it is with human nature. We are in that place of somewhere in between. You see, I want peace my way, on my terms. We are very Frank Sinatra in this regard. I want it my way. How selfish and antithetical to the way of the Prince of Peace. For the way of peace in the world is with conditions. With Jesus, the way of peace is without conditions. And I don't know about you, but that is downright difficult to imagine. But the peace is offered, the peace is there, and I must work towards peace, but make no mistake, it is sometimes just that work. The 
language in our Old Testament text, Zechariah, assumes war. I will cut off the chariot of Ephraim. I will cut off the war horse from Jerusalem. There is work for the Prince of Peace to do. The world assumes war. Jesus assumes the position of peace. Jesus comes and does not just offer peace. Jesus comes and Jesus is peace. It is simply who Jesus is. It is who God is. It is who the Holy Spirit is. In the peace of the world, we assume war. We're skeptical. We, we seek peace with negotiations. The Treaty of Versailles, the Treaty of Ghent, the Treaty of Guadalupe, the Treaty of San Francisco, all treaties that came to end many of the wars in the 20th century. In each of these treaties, negotiations were hammered out to get to peace. With Jesus, there are no negotiations or hammering out to get to peace because the work has already been done. The price has already been paid on that cross. He said, it is finished. There are no conditions with this Prince of Peace. This Prince of Peace, Jesus comes in a much different way. Jesus comes on a small donkey, not a huge steed. Jesus comes with a whisper of peace instead of a thunder of war. Church, we would be sorely mistaken to think that this Jesus way is soft or weak. Jesus' quiet, humble coming reverberates and has lasting, earthly, heavenly, eternal, ethereal effect. For Jesus' way of peace is actually stronger and brighter than a thousand suns. Our problem is, is that we have eyes to see what is right in front of us. We don't have the lens of God and we are not offered Kairos time at all times because as a society, we're fixated on Kronos time. A few years ago, our daughter, Sully, showed us a video of the moon and then showed us how much bigger Mercury was. Then it moved to Venus and Earth and Neptune and Saturn and the sun. With each passing image, it showed not just a slightly larger orb, it showed an exponentially larger orb. And then it kept going for what is bigger than the sun. Turns out lots of things are bigger than the sun. The video went on to show a star exponentially bigger than the sun. It named the next star Sirius A. Then it moved on to Pollux and Arcturus and Antares A and on to the largest known star, VY Canis Majoris. This thing is huge. Bigger and bigger, unfathomable is the universe and God's command of it. That is Jesus' peace. God's Son shall command peace to the nation. And commands are supposed to be obeyed. Jesus' dominion will be from sea to sea. It is an utter and complete sea to sea. This promise is twofold. See to see is a declaration that death, evil, darkness will be destroyed and dominioned over. Christ rules over death and all that is evil. It is not just peace that Jesus brings from sea to sea. It is utterly complete as far as we can imagine or conjure up. And then from the river of life and the river of death all the way to the ends of the earth. All of these words are meant to awake ideas of eternal, forever far-reaching, consequential truths and places in our minds and our hearts and deep into our bones. For there is no place anywhere that is beyond Jesus' peaceable kingdom. His princely power is paramount, providential, and perfectly complete. I don't know about you, but I need to hear that promise over and over again. Let it envelop you, wash over you, comfort you, hold you, and bring you peace. For Jesus' peace is a peace that truly passes all human understanding. Let your heart and your mind be filled with peace, perfect peace. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. There is only one way that that song rings true. Let the Prince of Peace bring it to you.
Amen. Together we proclaim our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Everlasting God, we bring our prayers to you, asking that your blessing of love and peace may be known to all people everywhere. Help us to bear abundant fruit from the seeds of potential that you have planted within us. At this time of great uncertainty, we place our hope and trust in you, whose love never fails. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, we are your chosen stewards of this beautiful world. You provide us with seed and soil to sow them in, but sometimes we abuse this privilege, and so we look to you for forgiveness, for the damage we have done to this earth, 
and pray that you would show us ways of healing the wounds that we have inflicted on the land, ourselves, and on each other. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, we lift up today our mission team in Malawi. We pray for Heidi, Doug, Julie, Sam, and Gay as they accompany the people there, sowing seeds of your love and promises. We pray for safe travel and for your Holy Spirit to continue guiding them as they journey home. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, you desire that all the peoples of the world work for peace, justice, mercy, and reconciliation. Today we pray especially for the people of Ukraine, that there would be a ceasefire, a withdrawal of Russian forces, and for peace to prevail. We pray for the innocent, the women, men, and children who are displaced, whose lives are disrupted, and who live in fear of the atrocities of war. We pray for those with power, that they may make a resolute decision to never use force and seek peaceful solutions to disputes and disagreements. We pray that there may be a recognition of our common and shared humanity and that God's promise of flourishing life is for all people. Help us to trust in Jesus Christ as we remember that God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. Lord, in your prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we raise before you all those who seek healing of body, mind, and spirit, asking that they will sense the touch of your loving hands and feel your presence and peace alongside them, each and every step of their journey towards healing and wholeness. Send skilled caregivers to all in need, especially those listed in our bulletin, and make your presence known among all who suffer. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful God, we offer you these prayers for ourselves and for others. We ask you to accept them and to use them and us, so that your will may be done on earth and more of your kingdom would be revealed to those who seek you. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And take a moment to share the peace with those you're worshiping with today. Announcements for you this morning. Um, as I mentioned in the prayers, please keep the Malawi team in your prayers this week as they journey home from their two week journey in Malawi. And anyone in your life or family that's of middle school age who would love a fun day out, please join us at Valley Fair on July 12th meeting there at 10 a.m. And then our big uh, fundraiser backpack uh, give back has started. And if you check out the display in the atrium, you can grab a shopping list. And also, if you'd like to give a donation of money, we will accept those through July 31st. Also this week, we have 30 campers starting um, in our Theater 301 camp of a production of James and the Giant Peach. These are delightful shows, and you can get tickets for that um, by calling Jill, Jill Cowan in the church office. And now we will receive your offering for the mission of God's church. When the best of me is barely breathing, when I'm not so i
In Holy Communion, you will be offered both red wine and white grape juice in the center of the tray. We also have gluten-free wafers available for those who need that. Just ask your server. And here at Mount Calvary, we practice what's called an open table, which means that everyone, everyone is welcome to this meal, no exceptions. Please rise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread took and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, and the ushers will guide you forward.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. And receive the benediction. May the God of creation strengthen you with love. May the Christ of new life inspire you with hope. And may the spirit of new beginnings empower you with faith. Amen. Stay for the postlude if you're able to. Go in peace, live in the spirit. Thanks be to God.